Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are doing another episode of the Making Home series. Let's get started on this living room makeover, making some beautiful wall decor for my thrift find. All right, so this is the next room we're gonna try to focus on. These have been replaced. I had more of like a goldish color during the fall and winter. Um, now that this couch is gone and we've moved our recliner back in here, these don't go to the ground, which drives me absolutely nuts, but that's okay. That is something that can be changed later on. Um, don't like that lamp, but that's going to be here for now. It also helps with filming. That's a picture my aunt took of me when I was younger. That'll probably get moved to somewhere else, but I do want to hang it up somewhere in the house. Now, see this? Drives you nuts, right? Drives me nuts. Um, that was scooted over more, but that still wasn't even, I don't know what we did and what happened, but it was, it, it's just horrible. I hate it. I think I just wanted to get stuff up on the wall. Um, I have dried flowers that fell over there. I got to clean up those tables were an upcycle that I did a long time ago that before YouTube. So those eventually will get moved. I have some side tables upstairs that'll come downstairs, but that's going to be later on. So what we're focusing on. Like I said, it's just above the couch. I'm gonna make sure this is centered because we only have two items here, or two seating places here. And then I'm gonna go and show you what frames we're gonna put above this. And I'm gonna use some awesome pictures from Brie from Upcycle by Brie, or prints that I got that are florals. And y'all, I never use yellow, but I'm adding a little bit more yellow this summer in my decor. So let's go check out the frames. All right, these are in my garage. These are really big frames, used to be mirrors. I'll probably throw in the TikTok that I made forever ago. I haven't been really active on TikTok, but I'm thinking about doing that soon. Um, but these are pretty big frames and they're a decent size what Brie had sent me. And so what I'm probably gonna do is take some trim and like make a little canvas hanging with those images. So that is what we're working on and let's go get the paint and get started here's a little bit of a closer look sorry you guys they are doing construction but in front of and behind me um there's a lot of dings and nicks there was this was a mirror um that's the back this is the front about did it backwards but i'm leaving all the leftover paint that i couldn't get when i stripped this originally i'm just gonna kind of wipe this down it's already clean i mean I'll get some water and stuff, but let's get this done. I'm going to go get my old and gray, and I'm using awesome basil sweet pink and milk paint that I ordered from Brie from Upcycle by Brie, so go check her out for all your milk paint needs. Can't wait to see how this turns out. Okay, so we're going to use old and gray liquid patina. I have a pretty good amount left, but I'm still just going to water it down. I do like the tone of this wood for the most part, but I'm just going to put it in here. See what that gets me. And then we're going to water it down. So. Just like the DIY paint, the patinas are very pigmented. So just water it down to your liking. And this wood was way drier than I expected especially after I had stripped all this paint off and sanded but I'm going to not only water down the patina I'm also going to spray my frame and just get it on there it does dry pretty quick especially if you're in warm weather outside like I was so just don't overwork it but once you get it on there make sure that you evenly distribute all of the product and if you want to do a couple of coats, you can. This just gave me a nice little base before starting the basil. Sweet pink and smell paint. Once that is dried, let's get this basil sweet pink and smell paint all mixed up you do one parts warm water to one part of your powdered milk paint and you're going to mix it thoroughly if you have an immersion blender i hope to get one off amazon soon that'll be better it'll be less clumpy but it wants to be the consistency of a milkshake i'm just brushing it on this is amazing to me that this is already one coat for one this wood was a lot drier than expected and so the milk paint is soaking it up but the coverage has been absolutely beautiful and I already loved the basil color but adding a little bit of white gave it that perfect tone that I wanted as well so it was a happy little accident that I wasn't expecting and I'm just going to get it all covered over once it's dry I will go over any streaky parts but I really didn't have that many on this wood frame and the color is gorgeous but we're going to do some more to it All 
I'm first trying to hand sand this milk paint as buttery smooth. Sweet Pickens milk paint. It is absolutely beautiful. Now let's see what happens. All right, y'all, I'm trying to beat the rain. Now, I was able to distress some. I don't want to use my oil sander so it could take off too much. And I have some crackling and some spots. You're starting to see the wood grain come through here. But I think I'm gonna take, I think those white specks are where the white wasn't all the way mixed in, which doesn't bother me. But there's some cracking that's wanting to happen right here. It's really wanting to. So I'm going to risk it all after having none of this paint left and get it a little wet in some spots and see what can come up because I do want a little chippy. Let's first try maybe up here. I'm just using my light mister. You could also use a wet rag. I'm gonna do some wet distressing just see what happens. This won't stay wet long because it's pretty heated here. So we will see. However, I don't want to get it too wet. No paint is unpredictable. Remember that. some chippy but be careful you want to seal this as soon as possible because especially like this I'll seal it with a wax because I don't want it to continue to chip I wasn't gonna do it I got a little bit come up here it's hard to see in this light sorry I feel like someone's wanting to chip finally you can see the crackle all through here but I'm bringing out the big guns I'm using the electric sander at least around the edges to see what I can do again sometimes it'll all chip off sometimes half of it won't and I didn't even use extra bond so let's see what happens if not they're good enough for me to bring this beautiful frame to life. First, I'm starting with DIY clear wax. Look at the difference in the clear wax next to the part that's not waxed, the richness that it brings out in this paint along with DIY paint as well, but any paint I've used with this wax is gorgeous. I'm wiping it on and then I'm immediately wiping it back. I'm not very patient, so I'm gonna go ahead and start using some black wax and then we will go back in with some white wax to give it a really cool effect. And I'm really shocked on how it turned out. Okay, you can kind of see where this wax it has gone a little crazy and I even did clear wax, so you have to be very careful with black wax. But I wanted it in these nicks and crannies. I wanted it on the raw wood and now I'm gonna go over both pieces all with white wax. You can mix your waxes. And we're just gonna go all in. All right. I'm gonna just do a light coating of the white wax to see what I like first and then I go in a little bit heavier and I wipe back immediately because I wasn't trying to get a heavier effect. But then I end up going in a little bit heavier. And this gave it almost like a seafoam green with the undertone of the original basil color. It ended up beautiful, but I didn't record it. I ended up going back over with some clear wax and using it like an eraser and bringing back a little bit more of the quote unquote original green. And here in just a second, you will see the difference in with the white wax and without it. Which color do you like best? My amazing husband went ahead and got these up on the wall. Aren't they so pretty? I love it so much. But now let's use these beautiful floral prints that I got from Brie. Cut down some of this trim that I got from a salvage yard and I'm just taking some clear wax on it to richen up and soften the wood because these are very dry pieces. I only used hot glue, 
but do not wax the back side because hot glue and wax do not mix trust me I've learned that the hard way and I just glued them on if you were selling these or if I was I would staple the backs as well but since they're for me we're gonna go the easy route and then I took some twine from the Dollar Tree and I'm just measuring it out cutting it and then we're going to as well hot glue this on the back I just do a little corner and I always glue mine down at an angle I feel like that works easier and fray the edges so there's not as much of a bulky back but I'm telling you all this is awesome you all this was so easy and it's so beautiful so let's get these up on the wall let's see how the before was aka the eye twitch is what I'm calling it and now the after I have an amazing focal point and there's so much more to do with this space so please make sure that you are hitting that subscribe button and ringing the notification bell share with all of your friends we are on the road to 1000 and I'm so excited that you all have already become a part of my handcrafted family you all mean so much to me and sharing with friends or making sure you subscribe helps me be able to do even bigger projects even more detailed things and it just makes me so excited I cannot wait to turn around this entire rental space and make sure that you come back on Sunday I do upload every Tuesday and on some Sundays as well and I will be doing a makeover for the summer of the front porch with my mama so I will see you all on Sunday I love you all so much and I'll see you soon bye